Now, if you look at the geography of Taiwan, you can see it's an island completely surrounded by water. And because of this, many individuals have the dream of traveling on the water. And today, we are going to meet one of those dreamers. Are you ready? Follow me. I am Alana. I was born profoundly deaf, but that doesn't stop me from trying new adventures. I fill my days with exciting activities and aim to live my life to the fullest. I love exploring the spectacular mountains of Taiwan and its surrounding seas. Join me as I discover more wonders in Taiwan. Follow me! So is this the boat we're going on? Yes. yes. So what's her name? What's the name of this boat? The boat for this name is the Rosy Sky. I'm really excited. Can we go now? Yes, yeah. but no. no. Yes means we can go, but no means we need a little bit study before we go. Okay. We should okay. do some training. Let's study. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Go. Go. Also, before we board the boat, we have to change our shoes really? to a boating shoes. Like Two? this is a shoes. Uh, oh. It's for land, right? For walking on the street, so they are black. Right. But so the boating shoes have a special design. They have more uh, clean. Yeah, and also they can. They have better grip, so you won't slip on the boat. Oh, good. When the boat acts, yeah. get water spray. Yes. Yeah. So you walk on it. You have this, right? So it's kind of like when you're going into somebody's house, you have to take off your shoes. Yeah. To it's the same and then manner. change into slippers. So. Ta da! Stand. I will get the boat Stand. closer, so easy for you to step on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll pull and. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> First, let's introduce the, the boat, right. right? This is the stern of the boat. The stern of the boat? The stern. Okay. And this is we call a cockpit. You this can steer the boat. Yes, but it's much bigger than I We have answered. a twin station. Because when boat underway, yeah. sailboat underway, yeah. it heals a little bit right. when the wind Blows onto the sail. Yes. So when the boat heels, you will prefer yourself to sit on the windward side. And then, uh, of course, there's an instrument panel and compass. How cool! If you see forward, you can see all the hatches are up. Yes. Why is for that? ventilation. Oh. So we have better air inside. inside. Right. And also at the far end we call it bow. Over there you can see the foredeck and also you see in the middle of the boat there's a mast, right? Oh. It's pretty high there, right? Very so the, high. So the sail is big sail. Right. So the bow means the boat can move very fast because the, the wind engine we call it. Wind engine? Wind engine. I like that. Have you ever heard yeah. about that? Yeah. Okay. Right. Also inside there's a mechanic engine. Oh, the motor? Motor to help us to get the ball out. So we yes. can see we've got two engines. One is more natural and one is man-made. We've got the wind engine and we've got the mechanical engine. That's right. correct. Right? Okay, here we can sit. Okay. You feel comfortable? 
Yes. Very relaxed, right? So, when sailing, besides the manner, we have many other things we need to learn. Okay. And we also have to know the terminology. The terminology. So we can communicate. Right. So okay. we have to learn new vocabulary. And we probably find one of these books. Which one? Yeah, that's the This one says right? you have basic yeah, heel that's, book. A good, that's a good one. That's wow. a good one. So if you open the page. To what page? About in the middle. Yeah, here is the ah. book, right? About um, where's the parts and how we can recognize right all the terminologies here. So you can see we've got different diagrams with instructions on how to handle the different equipment of the spell yes. and we're going to learn some. Learn some? Yes. Okay. Let's study. But okay here we can go there we can practice some of the knots. Ooh. I'm excited because that means I'm and a professional also, sailor. When you move around the boat, remember one hand for the boat, one hand for yourself. Okay. So it means you grab something, yeah. right? But not the rope. Rope is not. No, not, not reliable. reliable right? So you you put things away, you grab something, and then you start walking right? like that. And safer. Right. You grab something handle. That's why there's yeah. so many metal handles everywhere. That's, that's why. Hey, yeah. That would be useful for me because I don't have that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now let's see how to tie a knot. That's a fender, right? That's a fender, you see? Ah. Fender. To protect right. the bone, not to scratch on the right. on the dock. Like a bumper. Yeah, like a bumper. Protection. Yeah. Like a bumper car. It is. So when we tie a cloth hitch, first That's you lay it. over and then you cross the first one. Yeah. And then you come back through here. Okay. Like a heart. Here. Like a heart. And, then and come up. Bring up. And then bring tight. And then this. Then you can adjust the height. Yeah. But remember, cloth hitch is not very secure. It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't very secure. So you will need a full half hitch. Oh. You know, this is the half hitch. See? That's oh. one. To make it more. Oh, yeah, sorry. and then that's okay. Another one, same direction. Yeah, same way. Oh, you're genius. You're born to be a crew. You learn once, you know how to do it already. Okay, that's uh, one very important knot, right? right? And then we can learn another knot. There are three different ways to tie a bowler. Bowler means, okay. uh, you know, a, a knot. knot. Yeah. Let me show you. First, you have your finger this way, and then you go over uh, this here and make twist like that. Yeah. Wow, that's wow. tricky. Okay. You're good. And then you pull this end and go underneath. Wow. And come back to the hole. To the hole. Come back to the hole. And there you go. You pull, oh, I've you seen pull this. Two lines. And that's the ball line. That's the ball line, you see? So nice and pretty. This is the German way? No, that's the most common way. And also, the knot has to be secure enough so you can rely on the knot. Yes. And number two is you can easily tie and also I easily tie. to ease it. Right. And also another thing is if you pay attention on every knot, every knot is somehow they don't go easily break like this you know if somebody tie a knot like this yeah. it's a very bad yeah. bad knot yeah the, the breaking strength will be yeah. right the power of the rope will reduce okay. and then we open the knot we can say we break the knot we break the yeah, knot like this way oh you see we break the knot 
and then they all open. Right. And then you want to eat it, just push yeah, it. Yeah, and break it. And right, break it. the knot, and then you can, everything falling apart. Woo! Easy, right? I'm a sailor! Okay, the next step is uh, winch handling. Oh, okay. Because this also this is the part I'm excited for. can be as problem as the boom. Because sometimes this winch can take a lot of force. So this is what you were telling me about where the manpower is not enough yes. and we need this to help us. Exactly. Right. So once it has a lot of tension on you don't like your finger to be caught into there. So you have to know the right way to handle the rope. First, you handle the rope having not this way, but holding this way. You see, this is the way to handle the rope. Because you'll be stronger. Yeah, keep well, your finger away from the problem. So you can see all throughout the practices that we're doing, there's a lot of safety measures in mind. So they teach us not to hold it this way, not to hold it this way, but to hold it this way. So it's more secure, stronger, but you're not hurting yourself or getting your fingers caught in this. So we learned this. Yes. What else do we need to learn? Also remember, we are land animal. Land animal. I we are not, not fish. Be. So we have to learn a lot of new things today. Any rope to run on the winch has to be clockwise. Clockwise. Right. So you can use winch to help you, right? Uh, so, so once you stir, it won't go back. It will just stir and then it will hold your location. That's correct. Okay. And also we need the friction. Right. So one wrong is not enough. One wrong is for packing. They can undo. Yeah, to bring the boat, bring the rope in, yes. But yeah. if you want to use in the power, you yeah. need at least three. Three? At the least. Okay. But four, five, better. six, even better. Stronger. Depends on how strong the wind today is. You need this, right? Okay. Uh, we call it winch hand. That's way to get it in. Then you can bring Much the easier. Woo. Okay, this is the faster speed, but this is the slower speed, but more powerful. You can try it. Now I'm about to turn the winch handle, but you have to do it in a way that maximizes the strength. Not on this, actually, you want to grab it on the side so you can get the real good handle on it and spin it. Okay. And you can go, oh, too much. Too excited. Oh, uh, thank you. Okay. Ta-da! That's for winch handling. Winch handling. Okay. At the old time, the rudder is using steering oar oh, on the right. on the steering side. Okay. So then later they turn into a starboard side. Steering side. And this is the port side means we're using this port side to dock the boat. So the whole world they drive on the right side for the boat. During the old time. But nowadays all the rudder in the center. Yeah. So they don't have this problem now. Okay. No problem? No problem. Okay. <laughs> How sensitive is the steering wheel? You can try it. You can feel Trim. it, yeah, but not too fast. Yeah. You turn it a little bit, then you will feel it. Then oh, I you have, have to, to go this way uh, to now. the light. So you turn a little left, and you see. Oh. Okay, now you see. Very you sensitive. Can see it. But also, the boat needs time to react. Yes. Um, I still don't know why it's so big. Also, it uh, depends on the, the speed of the boat. Depends on the speed. You have a faster speed. You turn the wheel a little bit, then they react very, yes. very big. I'll just go straight. Yes, uh, wait. Uh, now it's okay. Later we have to go against the wind. Uh, Direct against the wind so we can get the main up. Uh, main means the main sail. Okay. 
Yeah, that's it. Oh, wait. Woo! Right. I love right. it! Wait. No. Oh, no. Wait. 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 So we can get the wind yeah, to yeah, blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To blow straight. Oh. Okay. Yeah, the main. So now we are doing a mix of machine and engine, mechanical yeah, and so, and, engine, yeah. and wind engine, because you can see we hoisted okay. the sail now and now we go the to wind the right. is blowing against it, which is driving our boat faster. And then, since it's difficult today because you don't see the horizon, right. so you can use your imagination uh, target aim so you can go straight to the target so the bow will not right. you know like a so you just don't want to be me and join you just want to keep going in a straight yeah, line yeah. in a straight line so uh, a very important part of being able to use the wind engine is the thing at the very, 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 very top of the boat, which is the wind indicator. There's a tiny little compass, it's a stick that points to the direction that the wind is coming from and it's really helpful for the captain to look at so he can adjust the direction to maximize the sails, right? The wind engine. Yes, and also, you see, when you go up wind, yes. which is against the wind, now we are against the wind. Yes. It's uh, the easiest way is the sail is almost like an airplane wing. Mm -hmm. The airflow over yeah. the both side yes. of the airplane wing, yes. the upper side, yes. create the lift. So this one where is the airplane wing? Uh, it's on the lower side of the sail. The museum. While I was at the museum, I saw a very interesting boat, which was the Princess Taiping boat, of course. Why did you guys decide to do that really cool project? It started uh, many years ago. Luckily, I find uh, people who are capable to build it. How long did it take to build? Uh, uh, it's about a year. A year but to build. We need five years to do the research before we build. Six years, right? the preparation. Yeah, so we start uh, for Taiwan yeah. and over Japan and make the cross Pacific cool. to the west coast yeah. of uh, uh, California. Mm -hmm. uh, the place where we, the, our first stop is uh, for Eureka. Eureka. Eureka in language means I found. Oh, they make it sound so casual. Oh, less than a hundred days, a, a third of the year on the boat, no big deal. Wow! Going sailing is like a charge in the battery. So you have more energy Recharge. facing the problem is, in the next week. This is a reoccurring theme that I see among all the experts that we meet and follow Alana. Is that they say when they go into nature, they all say the same thing, which is it recharges their battery. Okay, come back. Ready? Then you come back. Oh, okay. To the house, white, white house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not really a house, but it's a white sign. Right. Welcome to Kaohsiung, right. something like that. Okay. Now, as you can see, we're docked and we just finished our sailing trip. And what's really cool is we've got a little navigation system over here that not only tells you where you are while you're sailing, but it can also show you your journey. So do you want to explain what we're looking at here? I think we're over here right now. Yes. 
and this is the long bay that we went through and this is where we sail. This is uh, this and then we go this, we tag, another tag and tag then we come this way then we drop the sail here then we motor in back this way. Yes. Very cool. Thank you for the trip. Thank you. <laughs> okay. okay. Look, so you. thank you for today. Thank you so much. Good thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You know, a reoccurring theme that I see in so many episodes of Follow Alana is several of the experts that work in nature tell me the same themes over and over again. For example, they say that being in nature recharges their soul. They say that being in nature relaxes them. It's a very powerful bonding experience. As Angela explained, people who sail together are alone together on the ocean and that's a very powerful bonding experience. So these are several reoccurring themes that I see in several episodes of Follow Alana, but I think something that's particularly unique about sailing. So when you get on the boat and you sail out to the harbor, it really has a fresh way of putting into perspective how finite your resources are. So being in the middle of the ocean with a very limited amount of resources puts things into perspective. And you can take a look at that at the bigger picture when you look at this toy on it and the fact that unfortunately it still does have a limited amount of resources. So I suppose you could say we're all on this boat together. <laughs>